Welcome back, everyone. Well, I've been chasing this down more, and as you can see, they're getting close to the same size. And what I'll do is I'll take this one down just a little bit more, but I've decided to leave this oversized compared to this one, and the reason being because it's a soft wood, and we might need a little bit, a little bit better oomph when we go to put the um, threaded insert in and the stud and um, we got our ferrule which will go right here as you can see we're getting down further to that size of the ferrule as a matter of fact um, as a matter of fact we're very close to it right now you just uh, take that measurement and then you know compare it to this one or or more accurately to, to whatever size ferrule you're going to get. Um, that's real close so from here on out we'll have to be very careful about uh, bringing it down further especially in this area because we don't want it to snap and break after we've done all this work and as you can see we're already getting some uh, cracks from drying out here so hopefully it'll stay together till we can do our drilling and get our threaded insert in so we'll go a little bit further with it and um, and uh, see how she turns out. Now you can see it's a little better angle for where that you can see where we're going to be taking this down. Right here, you can see some heartwood that's really pretty. It's going to be really nice looking when we put the finish on it. And uh, I'll leave it a little a little bit bigger than the other handle. But we'll just a little bit at a time be taking it down here and I'll be doing that with the parting tool. you get the idea I'll go ahead and finish it up but we'll start we got our size established right here and we'll just keep going across here until we get there and then we'll go to the next step okay we've got that down very close to this size here it's a little bit oversized but what we're gonna do is take sandpaper from this point on it's still rough right across here and we'll take our sandpaper and we'll just, while it's spinning, we'll just do that number. I can't overemphasize enough to get the steady rest, I mean your tool rest, out of the way because this right here is really sharp. So we're going to take that out of the way altogether. And then this is a fairly safe procedure, very common procedure. You just need to keep a real heightened awareness that this could grab and pull under like that. So if, you, if you're careful, um, you can do this safely. I folded the sandpaper over to where there's plenty of room to get in there. Just go back and forth. light pressure. If you push too hard it could grab and a sandpaper could cut you just like a knife. And we'll just do a little bit at a time and stop and measure. And this this right here, the finish here doesn't have to be really all that uh, smooth because th it'll be covered by our ferrule anyway. So what we'll do now is just uh, just do some more sanding. Let's go over it 
and over it and over it and over it until it gets uh, where you want it. And you want to start out with a rough sandpaper because if you get too, too uh, good of a finish on it, your stain won't stick. So you want to start out rough and then go to a finer grit each step. Anyway, we'll do that for a while and then we'll go to the next step. I did want to look at one thing and that is, see we're getting, we're beginning right here to get into the heartwood of that limb. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful um, effect. Um, normally, if we had uh, cut this piece of wood out like I had originally planned, we would have done it on a, on a cross-section of the log itself, but we're doing a concentric um, reducing, so that's why you have these interesting patterns here. If we had done a cross-section, you wouldn't have this uh, pattern. Just an inter interesting footnote. One last thing I wanted to mention about sanding is it's better if you do it at the not only a rough, a rough, start out with a rough finish of your sandpaper, a rough grade of sandpaper, but also um, at a slower speed. Um, that way you won't, because you can polish this so much that, that it won't take a stain or even a urethane won't want to stick. I think that's about the size that I'm going to go with. It's still quite a bit bigger than this, but because it's soft pine, uh, it'll need the extra girth to hold up under the pressure, at least I, that's my thoughts on it. Here's a freebie for you. Because I was in a hurry to, to uh, get this project done, I ordered this. From, I actually ordered it through Amazon, but I wasn't paying close enough attention to uh, the details. <coughs> and if I hadn't have been in a hurry for the price I paid for this one, I could have got 50 in a package. And this one here, this is our um, this is our threaded um, insert. And these are a common item, and they're really cool. They're, they're um, something you can do some amazing things with cabinet work and woodwork. Anyway, what, we're, what we'll do is we'll drill. To drill the proper size, we have to have a 15, 30-second drill bit. And we're going to drill in the end of this, and which at that time you'll be able to see why we left these two ends, this, this, these uh, pieces on the end. And this, the same deal, I went today and got it at a hardware store, and... I could have got 25 for what I paid for this one by, if I had ordered it ahead of time on Amazon. So I didn't have all my ducks in a row and you really pay out the nose. So you might keep that in, in mind and do some really comparative shopping. Anyway, this threaded insert, uh, I don't want to get in an argument with a bunch of guys on uh, YouTube about this. But the fact of the matter is they were saying that this notch, uh, it looks like it's for a screwdriver and it's not. And that you should insert them this way. Well, that's wrong. Uh, they're partly right in that this is, you can use a screwdriver right there with no problem, but this slot is actually for a driving tool that you can buy um, that fits into your drill. And that slot is what that's for. And yes, you do drive it in this way. Anyway, um, we'll stop and I'll get the drill press set up and we'll see. Um, it turned out I lucked out and, and had a 15, 30 second. That's a, very, uh, an, uh, not a real common size. So um, I was lucky that I had it. So I'll get, we'll get it set up and see what the next step is. This here is Papa John. And he is an old timer. He's about 18 years old, 18 or 19 years old. And this old boy has paid his dues. Been in a lot of fights and just a real good old cat, long-legged farm cat. And I wrap Papa John. He's my outdoor cat, and he's my indoor. If they didn't fight all the time, they, both of them could be indoor. 
Anyway, okay, here's the lowdown on what we're fixing to do. The reason, well, one of the reasons, a convenient reason for leaving these, this stock on the ends is, well, one, you have to, to make any piece, whether it's wood, metal, or whatever, you're going to have to have some that you can cut off because that's what the lathe is holding. Now, you see on my drill bit, I've marked it with white tape for depth, and where I got that measurement was simply this plus that. And it came up with a depth of that much by the time I go in. I'm going to leave the stock on the ends here for the time being. Um, but we'll go ahead and, uh, and drill, and then uh, our, our um, threaded insert will go in next. So let me put the camera back. Okay, let's see if we can get a decent picture. Yeah, that'll be okay. The other thing I was going to mention is the reason for, for leaving these past this point. I mean, you could go ahead and cut them off and then try to drill and thread this, but this is make, going to make it so much easier. Um, you'll notice that this where the uh, spur held it and where the uh, live center. So you've already got a concentric establishment of your center line. So that'll help immensely because we don't have to find the center of this. It's already been done through our turning process. So the, the drill bit should follow it nice and smooth right down to where we need to cut. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. smooth hole and it should be dead center line. Now the other thing um, I was going to mention is ideally I'd like to use a flat bottom bit for this um, or a um, brad point. But that being, I mean the fact that we're trying to to use a threaded insert you have to drill an off size so that your insert will go in good and tight and stay that way. So we just had to use a high-speed drill bit for it. All right, we'll uh, stop for a moment. One thing that I did want to add that will make it easier to thread that insert in is I'm going to 
countersink that hole just a little bit and that should help it to get going just a little bit right there ought to be just fine oh how well you can see that not even an eighth of an inch now then I'm gonna take the um, I'm gonna apply a little soap to the threads just regular bath soap I'm not going to use liquid dishwashing soap, but, but a bar soap. And just add a little bit on the threads as a lubricant and help it go in and uh, not split, split our handle that we put so much work into. Okay, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take a coping saw, which you can do this several ways, but this is how I'm going to do it, and just cut this our stock off here. Okay, I finally got our ferrule cut down. I had to cut it down oh, about that much. And that was a pain in the butt, but there's there's ways to make it easier. I uh, one, one way is to find an 11 16 dowel pin and put it in there and then just use a pipe cutter, which I ended up doing. I just didn't have a 11 16 dowel. But anyway, that's done and it's ready to go on here. And I had to sand a little bit more and get it down to the right size. And I, I personally want a really good tight fit there at the very top. So I sanded it a little uh, at a taper. Anyway, I'll go ahead and get this on and come back. Here's my technique for driving this in. What I did was simply put, get a 3 8 bolt and a backup nut, run them in, and you just got to go at this very slowly because uh, it's just not that easy. Now they do make a, um, a tap of this thread configuration but you can thread the wood first with and they're kind of expensive and I don't have one so what we're going to do is just go very slowly just like this and work it in and we'll come back in a minute now before I actually put the insert in I, I, I threaded it in and I took it back out I want to wanted to put this back in the lathe and do some final sanding uh, get it ready for the final parting which is I'll use the parting tool to separate it here. I'll get it real close and then we'll finish cutting it off with the coping saw and I really think it's going to be a very nice handle. The one thing I did find out when I first started putting this uh, I tried putting the threaded insert in before the ferrule and it began to crack immediately so I found out that straight away you've got to put this ferrule on and then it'll thread on it's slow and tight but that's the way you want it and uh, that way it'll be a good tight fit and we'll just finish up sanding up and then uh, we'll put the insert in and I will uh, use some glue on before I put the insert in uh, just to give it some a little extra life. Well, it's just about finished. I'll go ahead and part it down here. parted down to about half an inch maybe a little less and I don't want to go any further than that because it could fly apart at this point so we'll just finish off by using the coping saw and uh, then we'll put the insert in with some glue okay we got the glue in 
I've chased the threads a couple of times now. And it's just about there. I'll just finish it up with my uh, screwdriver. And our stud will just be a bolt with uh, without the head. And uh, there's a couple more things to show, but uh, we're going to take this coping saw and we're going to cut it off right here, like that, and then sand by hand. But you can see that's going to be a very nice handle for our drill. And it's a lot of fun to, to do this sort of thing, too. And you can just finish up rounding it off with some sandpaper do that by hand. It'll take a little while, but uh, I think this will end up making a very nice handle and probably one that will last a good long time. Now, we could have probably bought one somewhere um, similar, but uh, it sure was a pleasure to make one. Plus, the whole point, what I'll do at this point is just put a 3 8 bolt in, and I've ran it down to be the same length as the, uh, the other handle, and I'll cut that off with the hacksaw and grind this at a slight bevel and then coat it or handle with linseed oil and give it a urethane coat and there you have a, a beautiful handle. I'll come back when I've got the um, linseed oil and the um, urethane on it and we'll look at the finished product. I've relieved this edge that we've cut off. Now if I continued sanding it I could make it completely rounded but it's fine the way it is and I think it'll make a beautiful handle and it's something that uh, you could probably go out and buy but a lot of times on antique tools the only choice you're left with is is making something that's um, that will uh, bring your tool back to functionality and this is just one small example of how to do that just polishing it up with a little steel wool before I finish cutting the head off. Um, one thing I wanted to share that's kind of handy is this vice stand that I made here. Uh, that's just an inexpensive vice, but I took a, an old aluminum wheel, put a round plate on it. It's just a piece of galvanized two inch and then a plate that the vise sits on and I've got to drill for two different vise. So I can take this vise, this uh, vise stand and, and roll it around anywhere and everywhere I need to go in the, in the yard or in the, um, anywhere here in the shop. And uh, I bet uh, not even counting the price of the vise, I probably don't even have five dollars in it because the wheel was a, a bent rim from uh, a service station that they, I just asked if they had any old rims that I could have and they gave me that one which is perfect for this. It's a nice wide rim and uh, makes it where it's not too heavy to roll around either but that's another tip for, and uh, it's, this is not an original idea. I got this from somewhere else so it's just uh, whatever whatever makes your life easier, go for it.
Okay, now I'll take that and just grind it down on the grinder, put a bevel around here so it will sit down in the tool better. And then we'll just be up to finish. This here is uh, linseed oil. And I'm a really strong believer in that. Um, your wood's going to last oh, much longer, much, much, much longer if you'll use linseed oil. Um, you can buy it two ways, boiled or, or not boiled. And boiled linseed oil is better. That's, that's the uh, better thing to go with. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just coat this really good and uh, let it set for a while and soak in and then we'll um, put a urethane coat on it. But I think that's going to make a beautiful handle and one that's going to last many many years. So we'll come back after a while and see what the urethane coat looks like. Well, there's the finished product. A really fine looking, sturdy handle that we made ourselves. I was going to stain it, but the natural beauty of this wood is so appealing that I just put linseed oil on it and then urethane over that. The last thing I'll do is take and put some Loctite. I'll take this stud out, put some uh, Loctite in there to just give it some extra holding power. But the whole point of all this is to be as self-sufficient as possible, plus have some fun at it. And you can discover a whole world of talent that you might not have known you had all along. I hope this helps somebody out out there. God bless and we'll see you next time.